Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I'm gonna share a really simple tool that you can use that will literally cut your sourcing time in half, if not more. And the best part is that this tool takes seconds to install and you can use it on any vendor site where you can grab all the product images and all the product details and save that directly to your Design Files account so that you can use those items in any future project. Now the tool that I'm referring to is the Design Files Product Clipper, which you'll be able to access right here in this menu. You're gonna see there's an option to get the Product Clipper, click on that. That's gonna take you to this page right here and you see this giant install button, go ahead and click that. That's gonna take you to the Design Files uh, Product Clipper within the Chrome Web Store. And you're gonna see a button over here that says Add to Chrome. Mine is saying Remove from Chrome just because I've already added mine. But you'll see a button that says Add to Chrome, so you're gonna do that. And then there's gonna be a little panel that pops up that says add extension. So you'll click that button and then your design files clipper is going to show up here. Now just an FYI, if it doesn't show up here, just go ahead and click into this little puzzle piece here. You've probably run into a situation like this where your design files product clipper is not pinned to your browser. So if your pin icon is looking like this, like an outline, click on it to make it active. And then that is going to pin your design files clipper to your Chrome browser so it's always visible. Once you've done that, you can go to any vendor's site. So let's say that I wanted to grab this chair right here from Paragold. All I need to do is click on my Design Files Clipper in my Chrome browser. And then the clipper is going to expand out here from the right side of the screen. Now, the, uh, you can see here that the uh, clipper has already grabbed the main product image. It's also grabbed a number of the product details here. And we'll talk about the product details in just a second. But first, let's go over the different ways that you can clip images from any web page. So it has already grabbed the main image, but let's just for the sake of argument say that I want the blue version of the chair. So if I wanted to clip the blue version, I could use the image picker. This is a really quick and easy one to use. So you just click on the image picker button and then you're gonna click on the image that you want and it's gonna load it in for you. Now, if for whatever reason you're on a site and it's preventing you from using the image picker option to clip these uh, images, you don't have to fret because there's also two different ways that you can clip images uh, into your product clipper. So you also have this screen grab option as well. So if for whatever reason this isn't working, try the screen grab option, click on that. That's gonna allow you to click and just hold down on your mouse button and you can drag a box around the image and then when you release it, that will show within your clipper. And lastly, you also have the option to just right click on an image and then you're gonna see a menu pop up. There's an option for your Design Files product clipper and here you can either clip this as the primary image or you can clip it as additional product images. So let's go ahead and we'll add it as the primary one. And then down here, this is where you can see that you can clip additional product images. So if I wanted to grab this one, I could just right click, move down here and I'm gonna say clip additional image and it's gonna load it in here. And then again, there's still the option if I wanted to, let's see here, we'll grab this version as well. I still have the, the image picker and the screenshot option tool here as well if I wanted to use these. So there's three different ways to clip the images. Whatever site you're on, you're gonna be able to grab them. Now below that, you're gonna see you have an option that allows you to decide where you wanna save this item. So if you save it to your main library, that means that you're gonna be able to access this product for any client project. So it's a great way to build up a collection of items that you're gonna use over and over again. You also have the option to just save it to an individual client project if you just want it to show within that, product, within that project's library. And of course, you can add it to multiple locations. Now, the next thing is that you're gonna see that it's added the product name. If you, if you don't like the idea of your client always being able to see the actual product name because you're worried about them trying to source the item themselves, you can actually add a generic product name here. And that means anytime you're sharing this product with your client, they're just gonna see it listed as armchair. But you'll always have the original product name for any of the purchase orders that you need to create. So here we can see that it's collected the vendor, the link, you can add categories as well. So there is a video in the video tutorial library that will show you how to add categories to your product library. It's a great thing to do because you'll be adding hundreds and thousands of products. So if you start adding categories, it allows you to filter down and find items very quickly based on the categories that you've added. And you can also add tags to help you filter as well. Now down here, you can see that it's added the price of the actual product. And if you logged into your uh, designer account on any of these sites and you're able to see the designer price that you can get the product at, you could go ahead and add in your designer uh, price. 
You can also include your markup and the system will calculate the client facing price for you. Alternatively, if you didn't want to include the markup and you just wanted to say what the client facing price was, so let's say it's 915, the system is then going to calculate what the markup is. So you can either choose to add the markup or you can choose to add the client facing price and the system will calculate the other portion of it. Now down here, it has grabbed all kinds of product details. Um, I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom here. Let's go ahead and we'll look for the dimensions. So there they are. So if I want to grab the dimensions, I'm just going to click the little grab icon right here, click on the dimensions and it's going to load it in. And then below that, you'll see that you also have the option to include lead time, shipping costs, and any general notes. And all three of these are hidden from the client. So these are just internal notes for yourself. When you're ready, go ahead and save the item. And once the item is saved, you'll be able to jump back over to your design files account. So I'll just close this down. We're going to go back over to my design files account here. And if I wanted to pop into, well, I can pop into my products right here and you can see that the item is saved right here and I've got all my product information. Now I can also find that item if I go into my library within the mood board software and you're going to see that I've got the arrows here so I can flip through and grab whatever version of this chair that I want and I can build it into my design boards. So it really kind of helps streamline the overall sourcing process and allows you to quickly start testing these products out within your designs so you can see if they're a good fit for the overall project. So that about covers it. Um, but definitely if you have not added the design files product clipper to your account yet, you definitely want to do that. It is going to save you a ton of time. And of course, if you have any questions about how to install it, how to use it, then please feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.